next topic. Our next topic is uh, from the Tyco platform, and this is a decentralized Ethereum equivalent bracket type 1 ZK EVM. Now, I'm not a developer, so this is all a bit foreign to me, but our speaker, Kang from Tyco Labs, is going to be explaining a little bit more. Let's give Kang a big warm round of applause. All right, Kang, please take it away. All right, uh, thank you for the short introduction. So my name is uh, Kang from Tyco. Uh, I'm doing developer relations at Tyco. Uh, full disclaimer, so today's uh, presentation is actually um, supposed to be presented by my teammate, but he couldn't come here because uh, of his passport issues. So I'll try my best to try to deliver this uh, keynote. So the title of today's presentation will be to um, will be about multi-layer dApps. So um, I guess in, in today's like um, L2 landscape, there are so many L2s. There's like um, Polygon, Mantle, Tyco, Scroll, but there, there is a problem, right? Like every single layer two has to has its like um, um, separated individual ecosystem. And what if we could um, aggregate all of these um, projects together? Um, first of all, it will solve like the liquidity issues, and also like from from a user's perspective, they don't have to switch between switch between chains to um, basically interact with them. And from like the developer's perspective, you don't have to redeploy like uh, smart contracts of on on every like different L two, right? So with that in mind, let's uh, just continue um, this presentation. So, right. So, in 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 the in today's like uh, state of like the single of each individual L L two, actually the state of the state of each individual L2 will also eventually grow too much and this leads to higher costs um, because of the storage that you have to uh, spend, right? So eventually each L2 will also grow, might also grow to the size of like Ethereum and gas fees will also increase um, accordingly. So the scaling factor of L2 is, of a single L2 is sort of like limited uh, by that. Right, and um, this diagram over here just shows like how um, at least how Tyco shares the the state between the L one and L two, so that um, um, so that you know uh, whatever assets that you bridge from L L one to L two um, is validated or or not. Right. So what do you want? Do we, what do we want to achieve? So. We, we want to achieve atomic and synchronous transactions across multiple L2 chains so it doesn't feel like it's splitting up. And I think that this is like the goal of many L2s and many uh, super chains out there. Um, so what does atomic and synchronous mean? So atomic means that it uh, whether a transaction um, succeeds or it doesn't. Um, for example, if um, like if a, for, for a regular solidity smart contract if there is a revert statement if if your functions gets reverted every um every state change state change before that doesn't uh happen at all uh, doesn't get mined at all uh and what i mean by synchronous is that um it happens in a sequence so all of the the transactions between the multiple l2s happen in in, in sequence and there is no like uh, weight between the two uh, L2 transactions. Right, so the first um, so-called architecture that we propose to enable multi-layer uh, multi dApps is the multiple L2 uh, architecture. So in this architecture, uh, we ask ourselves, how do I transfer a uh, token from L2A to uh, another L two B, right? So this is a simple uh, bridging example. So first of all, you you burn the token on uh, L two A. You wait for the validity proof, and then you deposit um, into the the other bridge over here, um, which costs like a L one cost, uh, like a it, it costs you to the pay gas fees on L1 to actually do this bridging, right? Then, 
from the L from from that L one, it gets bridged it, it gets bridged to your destination chain. So there's actually two transfers, which is um, not really efficient, um, and there is no uh, it, it is not atomic, and it is also it, it may be synchronous, but it is definitely uh, not atomic, right? Okay, so how do we improve on this? So the next, um, yeah, the next architecture is to use a shared bridge. So in this case, I think the mm, the general idea is to is is that users are able to just bridge directly between um, two L twos, right? So in this case, how do uh, how does a user transfer from one L two to the other? Um, first, it gets burnt on the L two A, same as before. You wait for the validity proof, and it will be actually minted directly on the L two B. But this, uh, in this case, is asynchronous. You need to wait for the proof on L two A to be submitted first before actually um, uh, before the the token can be minted on the on L two B. Right. And okay, so to solve the asynchronous issue, um, yeah, we we try to make the shared bridge uh, synchronous in this case. So, um, sorry, I think this should be a shared uh, sequencer. Yeah. So a shared sequencer will construct a super block on the L one with a transaction on L two A and L two B. So this means like the the mint the, the burn function on L two A, and the mint function on L two B will be proposed onto an L one block altogether, and this is how we keep like uh, the the atomic nature and the synchronous nature of uh, this cross chain uh, interaction, right? So just going through uh, these diagrams over here. Um, so for example, if we take like a L2A to be like this uh, one over here, um, as you can see, the bridge, the, bridge, the bridge doesn't have to go through L, the L1 anymore. It can just go through, um, uh, just go, um, just bridge between the, the L2s directly. Right. And also, on this diagram over here, um, the atomic cross layer transaction, yeah, atomic cross layer transactions, but the validity rules require executing all L twos and a shared sequence. So I so the shared sequencer would be in this uh, L one um, block over here, um, and yeah, it will probably because because you are including like a uh, both. Um, both L twos transaction in the L one block in the in the shared sequencer, you will probably need uh, very fast uh, zk proofs, very optimized uh, uh, zk proofs, or even some like optimism to 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 scale this solution. So yeah, this also um, is together with the idea of like a multi proof system. So uh, perhaps we could have some blocks that are proven using uh, using validity proofs and like maybe uh, 100 blocks in between you use optimistic proof so like every 100 blocks you have like a, a checkpoint using uh, validity proofs yeah for this uh, infrastructure okay so another way is to actually scrap the entire bridging idea altogether and use a l1 call and uh, or a l1 delegate call so this idea is um, basically you don't have you, you won't developers won't deploy any smart contracts on the L two, um, but yeah, all of the contracts will, will live on L one actually. So like your your Uniswap, uh, OpenSea, everything on on L one, but use L twos to submit calls or delegate calls that will be pushed onto L one. So. So your L twos are basically just communi communicating like the the state change that will be reflected onto L one, and I think this will 
solve the problem of um, um, having to deploy contracts on every single uh, chain, right? So I think the diagram here um, kind of sh um, shows a, give an, gives an idea of uh, how this might work. So on the L2, you th there will be a smart contract to just uh, uh, execute a call, uh, or, or rather this L1 call, which will indicate like the the address of the L1 smart contract and also the call data. So like uh, I don't know, like a swap or or whatever, and and then this L1 smart contract will be included. Um, the transaction, this whole L2 block, this. Um, request for state change will be included um, onto uh, L1 block like a regular rollup, and and this will actually um, indicate your state changes on the on the L1 chain. So yeah, so I think this would be a uh, uh, probably a pretty good solution. Um, uh, it's, it will be cheap and convenient to yeah, access the latest L1 data, but I don't think anyone has uh, done this yet, so it's pretty much experimental. And if, yeah, and if anyone could do this during the, the hackathon, like test out this uh, idea, that would be great. So basically using any L2 to call uh, L1 contract. Yeah. So, okay, so, yeah, so... Like all other L twos, like Tyco also has like also um, wants to have like a, a super chain, and we call it the, the Tyco Singularity. So with the same concepts that we have in mind, uh, it could be the the delegate call or the the shared sequencer. We want to have uh, we want to parallelize the deployment of L twos to scale uh, Ethereum. Yeah. So I I'm pretty sure this diagram is. Um, uh, common across um, most L2 super chains. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's the end of the presentation. It's pretty short. Um, yeah, and these are like further readings and yeah research that contributed to this short keynote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. As we understand, your colleague could not make it, unfortunately, so it's nice of you to be able to step in and still give the presentation. Really, really appreciate it. But could you open it to the floor? Does anybody have any questions uh, about Tyco, about the presentation? I'm not a developer, so all of this is a little bit... Okay, we have one. Yes, we've got some developers in the audience. Just please introduce your name and then also your quick question that you want to ask. Thank you. Hey, I'm Elias. Thanks for your presentation. I just have a question about the bridge from L2 to L2. I understood the shared sequencing. Just can you briefly explain how um, L2 to L2 is is um, is uh, sorry trust minimized like trust minimized or trustless? Okay, so this requires like this smart contract called the the bus con uh, bus smart contract. So it actually. Um, um, I don't have the code right here, but this bus contract basically um, indicates for every transaction on on uh, on like a single L two, it you have to modify your smart contract to um, inherit this this bus so that it can um, transfer data to the destination chain. Yeah, but um, yeah, maybe I can explain. Uh, uh, more in detail. I think if you see the the yeah the the sample code, maybe you probably understand. Okay. Yeah. Hey, sorry, the question was about the shared bridge. Oh, the shared bridge. Okay. Um. So, like, how how do you? Yeah. So part of the shared bridge. Um. It actually. Uh. Yeah. It actually adapts this um bus contract, but uh. Yeah, it's not here. So, oh, if you have the code later, you can show it to him. Perhaps after. Yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry right. about that. Might be no yeah. problem. No yeah. problem at all. <laughs> Perhaps later. Some things are a little bit complicated. You can't fully put it into words. Sometimes you need that smart contract next to you. But no worries. Uh, any last question? One more, two more. I like the term Tycho singularity. It sounds nice. Uh, okay, let's have one more question up here. 
All right. Please introduce your name and the question. Uh, so thanks for your presentation. So I'm Martinet. Uh, I have a question on the uh, super, like, I guess the synchronous uh, with the sequencer. So you have a super sequencer right there. Uh, my question is, if, if we're waiting for one of the L2s and that L2 is, is like, let's say crashing, could I'm considering this case. And how do you handle those cases? Like, because if we're waiting for all of them, then that kind of becomes like a DOS vector, uh, if that's a requirement. So I'm just wondering uh, what's the solution in this case. Um, so like the example would be um, if you submitted like a, a, bridging, a, a bridge um, transaction. So if you wanted to mint a token on L2B and you already burnt L, um, token on L, L2A, and what if like one of the ch chain cr crashes? Hmm. Okay, so um, I think in the in the shared sequencer, um, you include both transactions in in a single uh, block on on L1. So um, if either um, if either transaction doesn't happen on either chain, I uh, the block will be just like reverted on on L1. Yeah. Okay, hope that answers the question. If not, you can always find King and ask more questions after this. Let's give him another warm round of applause. Thank you very much, King.